one four on one fourteen. One four. Sure. Okay, is anybody listening to our chairman? I'll be right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's pretty quiet. I know. Any, any, any corrections or additions to the minutes for the for the one January fourth meeting? No. Motion to approve. So motion. Second. 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 Motion. Second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimous. Um, next item was to compile the ratings from the members for the various sites. We had three sites we were going to do, the combined existing uh, site one and two, combining site nine and 11 on East Street, and site six, which was the... Uh, oh, you already done that one. Sites 11 and 12. That, site six was the uh, one over in North Alley, the existing... Uh, what you call it? Fire station site. Yeah, 11 and 12. Right. So, ooh, I see. Yeah, if I may, uh, just we I had sent out, uh, I don't know if you got this, but I sent the same package that we printed just now, okay. uh, I think last week, with some updated maps. One, we updated the existing uh, DPW site to show the river, front, the river setbacks. Um, and just kind of made sure that there was uh, current uh, information. We did put in the what we think is the footprint of the fire station on the um, uh, on that site six. And um, just to point out, you know, we don't know the status of the permitting on that fire station. At least in the current data set that we can find, there is um, you know state uh, layer there showing natural heritage, uh, endangered species potentially. So again, I don't know the status of how that fire station was permitted and whether there's been changes to that oh, since then. But when in North Adley? Yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is the current information that we can get on MassGIS. So I, I think. Just want to make what sure does that this that's mean? What's that? Cross hatching. The National Heritage, I think. Uh, on which site? That's on the existing DPW. Who's on the sure. No, that's that's a zone two. So that's oh, that yeah, is right. um, uh, has to do with uh, aquifer protection. So it's a certain distance from a from a wellhead or from an aquifer. So that that does trigger some requirements. They're not terribly stringent. We've worked in that that zone before requires a bit more permitting and then the red line that you have the solid red line that goes all around uh that is that's that's simply property. just showing the, the property lines but that can't be right it's offset a little bit on these uh yeah sometimes these yeah, layers are off by quite a bit yeah it's it got sometimes these layers come out of gis a yeah bit. yeah i'm just well, saying well, yeah they get shifted welcome around. to gis Wally. yeah exactly sometimes it's the not. gospel and it's wrong <laughs> <They're not precise. laughs> exactly <laughs> right. yeah i'm noticing that on the front page too it's, it's yeah. oh okay because i'm your neighbor's what? garage yeah, yeah. really yeah. property yeah i get yeah. a lot of work from that but people look at it and oh my god my neighbor's garage is on my property yeah but you put the pins in in the first place right well yeah. <laughs> and i put them in the right place which doesn't match up with the gis no, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> so these are approximate for sure so how do we deal with i mean we i've got we've all got numbers i'm sure how do we are we going to give them to you uh that's up to you that would be the best thing to do then i can input them into a spreadsheet and kind of average them and, uh, yeah that'd probably be the okay. yeah probably be the easiest uh, I don't know if you want to review any of them or uh, if there were questions that came up while you were doing Well, that. the only thing is we combined sites one and two into one. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. We already did site number six. Yeah. And I thought we were combining sites nine and 11. And you know, here you've got nine as a single and then 11 and 12 are, are, are combined. Correct. Yeah, 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 no, 11 and 12 are the ones 11 on the southern part of it. And nine is a site. The nine is for more. 11 and 12 are these yeah. two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are south of Route 9, and the other one is okay, up so the I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I scored 11 and 12, if you wouldn't. I didn't score 9. Okay. Okay, well. All right. Did anyone pay attention to uh, 
if there's three phase power on East Street, I, every time I ride down there, I forget the luck. I have no idea. I, was I just assume there was because of the police. I assume there was because of the police. Station, yeah, well, that's I what I was know. assuming. Yeah. yeah. Hey, as long as we're talking sites, somebody told me over the weekend, Hadley owns about ten acres over by the dump. It used to be what they called the old Boy Scout camp. Yeah. So I took a ride out there. It it doesn't have three phase. I don't think it even has town water. No, it doesn't town, have no, sewer. No, no, but no. the town owns it. It's a good sized piece of property. It's right on the river. Though. And the river's right there. But so the dike is right there too. But you got 200 feet from the river, that's going to be impacted potentially. River, riverfront. The what was called? Even though the dike is in between. Yeah. 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 Really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's. It would. It, that would. Part of the stuff that was looked at a while ago for various stuff. Um, they want no, that was different. That was not the one, but they want was that not, that's not where we wanted to put the uh, transfer station way back with Dusa had, was it? I don't think so. No, that's 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 closer to the uh, east. The Boy Scouts closer to the west, I believe. Boy Scouts right here. The way we used to get to it was right up along the dike, right right up in off what is it, one west street, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the woods in there. Yeah. So just ten acres. Yeah, it got it was it got washed out. We started filling it in with stumps and brush and everything like that until people started bringing their decks and houses. Then that was the end of that. Yeah. So if we wait a few years, then we can put some rec recreational stuff over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did a lot of filling in. I think. Input it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the ability to do it now? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if I, I had. You updated the spreadsheet, right? I did. I had a uh, an additional spreadsheet that averaged. Yeah. I could input and then it would average it automatically. I don't remember if I saved that over or not. But wondering if there were any other questions that came up. You were reviewing these? That Just process? one other question. Yeah. Remember that meeting we, that was here, the climate change meeting, and uh -huh. they talked about the huge flood that could come someday? Where the DPW garage is now, is that high enough to be out of it? I would think so, Wally. Okay. It's, it's a good a good drop down to the river there. The hundred, you mean the 100 year flood? Yeah. Um, the, I think it's just out of it. Yeah, I, I okay. believe it's out of it. And how about Chamorros? Would that be out of it or not? Yeah. On East Street? No. I don't think yes. so. I think that would be it could get flooded. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think so. I don't I don't think it is. Have to add. Uh, I have never had any Hopkins is Hopkins is, but Hopkins is part of Hopkins is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the school is up high enough, but the yeah. playing fields are the playing the, the playing point. fields are under it and the uh where the Jim was. You just redid the marker behind Russell School. It's yeah. dropped a little bit from what where, it used where, to be. Where, the, where the old gym was, it was just out of it. Yeah. So there's Remember that thing that we did way back for the school in the school with the elementary school. We called it the parking lot. Yeah. The let's see, but facing Hopkins from Russell School, where the old gym was, that was out of it, and the southern portion of the parking lot is right on the edge of into it. But once you get into the, from out where the, the, the walkway is going up by the, uh, we go into the cafeteria, mm -hmm. there north, it was not in the flood zone. Okay. But that was the one, that's based on the 125 flood, flood, flood zone. Okay. So East Street up there is not in the flood zone, well, where Chamorros is. It's not in the flood zone. No. Okay. No. 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 And I suppose the, the south, the, the, East Street property south of Route 9 has the potential to back up. There's a drainage ditch there that ends up going into the cove, mm -hmm. so that potentially could back up into there. Um, yeah, we could input these now if you'd like. Yeah, that'd probably be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
If you get them all right, what do you win? <laughs> <laughs> Bingo, of course. <laughs> get the rest of Scott's whatever he's drinking there. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. I can't disclose that. <laughs> you wouldn't get me one, so that means something. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cow rate out of the dispenser. <laughs> Ninety-nine cents, Carol. <laughs> So what kind of numbers do you want from us? Do you want us to hand them to you? Or yeah. Go through them. Um, that we can easier yeah. to look at. I was going to say, people could total their own. I did do that. Okay. Yeah. Because it's that's going to require no. thought. Uh, oh, I guess you know what I mean. Because you, yeah, because that's the raw scores at the end. I see. Yeah. That's, that's all. That's why I care about the raw So we'd have to input it individually. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe let's not. I don't know if that would. Uh, well, we can. We we could take these with us. It might be more efficient then. Okay, that's fine. We can yeah, send that out. If you want to compare each line, if you don't, if we just give you the order. we just need to. We'll need to add them up. But I mean, I don't want to have you guys sit the <laughs> so add it up now. So we are can you looking it. for the, the grand total? Is what's important to you? Yes, correct. Yes. No, we can do it quick. Yeah. Okay. Well, that we'll won't take long. Yeah, we'll I'll get these two back. All right. Saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Curatively, why not adding, Randy? Can I ask you? Permitting on site number nine. I didn't know what was going on there. Permitting on site number nine. What, which one is that? Second page? Yes. What was it? Which one? Okay. Well, it's permitting on site number nine. So, which one? That's uh, number seven. That's Chamara's? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I I had zero for that because I, it's not zoned for it. Okay, so zero, okay. That's what I put. Thank you. Don't tell anybody we're cheating, Wally. <laughs> it's only a public meeting. I know. I think it is by special uh, permit permit. permit. Be by special permit. Okay. Which really makes them all actually equal, that's, essentially. That's I think special permit is required on any of the sites. Oops. From what we so that'll teach you for listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> that changes. Okay. Long, like I said, as long as you're consistent, it's really right. all that matters. Right. right. Yeah. Church and go anywhere. Right? <laughs> kind of. Yeah. One and two, mm -hmm. one oh three. Okay. Sites, site six, mm -hmm. we had I had ninety nine. Okay. Site nine was ninety, and eleven and twelve was one oh two. Okay, site one and two, ninety three. Okay. Site six, ninety nine. Okay. Site nine, <coughs> seventy eight. Sites 11 and 12, 85. Okay. 1 and 2, 91. 6, 99. 9, 78. 11 and 12, 82. 1 and 2, 94. Site 6, 99. Site 9, 76. And 80 on 11 and 12. Okay, site two, 101, 99 on site six, then 89, and then 96. Uh, site one, <coughs> one and two, 99. Site six, 99. Site nine, 94, 11 and 12, 96. Let's make sure the average is adding correctly. <laughs> Everybody, everybody should have 99 on number six because that's what we did in yeah. school. school so yeah. At least we all have, at least we're all adding yeah. correctly. It was. It was. Yeah. It was going to skew it. Oh. Is it getting old? It was. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. While she's adding, just as a reminder, um, everybody on a committee, elected, appointed, or otherwise, um, will be required to complete the conflict of interest course given by the state. Uh, right now it's being redesigned again and typically the town clerk sends it out to the department heads and the chairman and whatever else it might be. So when I get the copy I will forward the link to you and you're supposed to complete the course it takes but probably have to go to half an hour sometimes. Yeah, that was a good one. And the one good thing about it is it gives you an explanation and then it gives you some questions. And if you get the questions wrong, you can retake it. It's not like if you get wrong, you're 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 a bad bad person. You basically you can keep answering the question until you get it right. And once you complete it, it'll give you a certificate on the screen, either 
print it out or forward it to me or to the town clerk. She keeps a copy of the stuff that goes, goes into the file and I'm supposed to do that every every year or every two years? I think it's every two years. Two and years. I think they've, they've just revamped it so that the state's going to keep track of it, so it's going to take a little bit of work off of Jessica. Okay. So that certificate might be, it just stays, you don't have to print it out. But okay. She's she's still getting trained on it, so we'll know okay. more. Because she said it's supposed to be, I just asked her about it yesterday at, the, at the, one of their meetings, and she says they're still revamping it. It's supposed to be completed by the end of the month. And you have... There's no deadline that you have to do it by this date. You've got to get to do it sometime. Basically, it's almost going to be like sometime this year. You know. I guess it's hard to, to so, police it. So, yeah. yeah sure. but, uh, it's good because it keeps you out of trouble, so it's not like you're protecting uh, the town. If you do anything in conflict of interest, it's, they don't go after the town, they go after the individual. Yeah. So. I haven't seen anybody arrested, so, <laughs> so just to ease your... So you got something to look forward to and well, aspire to. <laughs> yeah. I noticed Jim was looking at me all the time he was talking. And, 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 and I, I have taken <laughs> this thing a whole bunch of times. The state revamps it every couple of years, and I never get them all right the first time through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's always like one or two trick questions, and then it's like, really? That's the answer? Yeah. And you know, like I said, it's got to keep you on your toes, Jim. Yeah, so you can't try to speed up because it's going to make you go slow down. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can't you read it all. Yeah, and it, 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 it's, it's not a time thing, but it forces you to go slow. You can't zip through it, you can't skip sections, like you can't skip the explanation. No, you got to listen to the, to the spiel. So, all right, so we've got these inputted. Uh, um, <laughs> And uh, looks like uh, site six is just slightly ahead sites of sites one and two. Can you give me the number, please? Yeah, the average. So what we did is just the average. So yeah. uh, site six is the lead with 99. That's the raw score, so that's an 85%. Uh, sites one and two have a 97. That's an 83%. Site nine, sorry, sites 11 and 12 are next at 90. 77 percent and site nine is last at 84 with 72 percent and based on these numbers that's not a surprise that not really, yeah. they're close right mm -hmm. and so it's a matter of like you know it's not a magic that we have to do this one or we have to do that just kind of a rough idea of which one that the group feels um, is most appropriate mm -hmm. and you know it comes down to the to the two of them um, you know the the two town sites are the highest on the list and that's probably not a surprise to anybody either so we're for that matter we're on the right track <coughs> more or less anyway that's probably where we thought we were going to be regardless um, so, with that said, uh, are there any other sites in town that aren't on this list that we might think might be appropriate? Mr. Klopacki wanted me to suggest the corner of Rocky Hill Road and River Drive, which yep. is Ronnie Waskevitz's property. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I forgot my phone. I left it at home, so I can't look. Okay. Do you... Do you know how big that site is? He thought it was like 10 acres, I said that. No, it's uh, not 10 acres. It's not 10 acres, no. I want to say it's probably somewhere around 5 or 6, if that. that. I would say yeah. you're right in that area, maybe 6. Yeah, yeah, because I, I said when we were at the meeting last time, he suggested that, and he says, oh, that's, I said, that probably 5 or 6 acres. Oh, no, that's over 10 acres. And well, okay, no. No way. You need a, you need a farmer. No, work. I just don't think that's 10 acres. No, it's not 10 acres, no. no. But no. It's, it's probably... Big enough. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's about the same size of what everything look we're looking at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it does have one good thing. It does have sewer, adequate sewer and water. It appears to be 6.8 acres. Okay. Can see here. Um, hmm. So there's another. But again, that's that's private land. I was gonna. I was almost gonna. I saw Ron. I see Ron almost every weekend. 
in church. And I was going to ask him, he tried to be well before I ask him, let's see if the committee thinks it's even worth pursuing. Would be interest, Would he be interested in selling it? It's not an APR or anything, I don't think. I don't believe it is. It's 661A probably. Um, so there's another possibility. So next time I see him, I'll ask him if he's running. What are the chances of you be interested in selling at the town for a DPW yard? See what he says. Okay. Okay. Um, with that said, since we are still up in the air on the site, one of the things I was looking at is, you know, we, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there, and this is really to address for Scott. I know that there's all kinds of listings of, you know, locker rooms and this and that and everything else, other things. What are the real needs of the DPW for the, for, for the facility uh, versus wants? Well, ob obviously, uh, you know, mechanics garage and, you know, vehicle storage and, you know, office space for where the trailers are, you know, could get the trailers into office space and some kind of obviously break area for the, you know, staff, I guess, are the main components. In the wash yeah. area, obviously, but yeah. we would argue that they're all needs. But yeah, well, no. yeah. I mean, they, when we went, I mean, all, not all of us were in on everything. Certain people were on different sections, right? Um, and they, the needs were addressed, but also we we were told to, you know, like in the future, you know, we built too many buildings that. I'm, 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 and, 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 and I'm not, I'm not in. In disagreeing with anything. I just want to get a compile of what are your, what are your, your true needs, and what are the wants. You know, like you know, vehicle storage. Well, how much vehicle storage do you need? How many vehicles? What kind? What's you know sizes? I mean, you don't have any semis, but you have a lot of. You I mean, I mean that new Vactor truck. What like we measured that head to tail was four almost forty foot, right? Yeah. 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 So I mean. That's just shy yeah, of a semi. Right. And it's how tall is it? So you still take yeah, into consideration. I mean, 12, 12, 4. The yeah. programming that we developed was, you know, based on their yeah. equipment list and their sizes of their equipment. Yeah. But yeah. In, in any garage door, you put an overhead door in and you want big equipment, my opinion is you want that door a minimum of fifteen foot high. Yeah. yeah. We for, for a couple yeah. of reasons. Sixteens. You're going to have some equipment damage sooner or later, and I, I, I wouldn't. I go back because a company building a, a garage, tra tractor trailer garage, in Tusco's, and original doors they had were 10 foot wide and 14 foot tall. And this goes back when Kepper was still alive, and I said, Kepper, that's not going to do it. What do you mean? I said, somebody has a damaged roof. I said, you got six inches of clearance, and that's where they put big doors in, and sometimes. Damaged equipment barely it's a 16 foot door, and even sometimes those things scrape. Yeah. So, you want to make it right, you want to make it adequate and not skimp, but you don't want to go crazy either. Um, so yeah, you know, I didn't realize your back the truck was that big. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> cra cra crazy as this is, so when we got the truck, we're like, it, it says it's marked 12 4. We're measuring it because you know, there's a little thing, and I'm like, oh, Gary. I'm coming up with like 11, you know, 11 or something. Just, it's right there. We're measuring the garage doors just to make sure they're 12 foot, whatever. So, oh, there's only one way to find this out. So, obviously, if you've been to our facility, when you come in the front side, you're coming up a ramp. So, we knew it wasn't going to, not even going to attempt that. So, the back door is relatively flat. So, of course, no one wanted to drive the truck, but I, I was the one forced into the cab. <laughs> Uh, so there's guys on ladders or whatever, so we're trying it, inching it in, and it's not going to go in there. But we, so for whatever reason, we said, oh, let's try backing it in. Maybe the geometry is a little different if it backs in. So here we go, trying to back this thing in. And you couldn't put these pieces of paper between the roof and that door going in there backwards. It'll go in, and we can get it in. But... It's that close. Were you able to drive it out? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. The reason I say that is because I'll go back to Matusa. We right. put a tractor trailer in a garage one time. Yeah. How they got it in, we don't know. Because when we pulled it out, it took the header out. 
Yeah, and we said to everyone, too, don't forget, we start getting some frost in the ground or whatever. There's snow out there. Snow out go. there. Yeah. Things might change. So, yeah. you know, if we're going to do this, make sure somebody's watching. It, it's yeah. that close. So, yeah, you need we need a high garage door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the backhoe boom, too. I mean, yeah, I bring the backhoe. Sometimes times. when you bring the backhoe in, especially if the... I mean, especially if somehow the arm gets blocked in a position. I mean, you can only get so high within reason, but if you're doing something and the arm is up or on, on, on some of the equipment, it's like, you know, gee, it's, it's, it's 20 degrees outside, and we got to get that puppy inside, and it's, you know, yeah. yeah. We have to lower it to drive it in. Well, sometimes, they're, what I'm saying, if they're damaged, we can't right, lower it. Right, right, yeah. 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 yeah, or the frozen, or anyways, okay. I, I, but, but, like, all, everything that they proposed, I mean, really, we need like a break room slash like in a training area. We do training down there. We have to meet different uh, criteria for training or whatever. We're setting up uh, tables in the shop and whatever uh, instructors or firms are bringing, you know, white, you know, uh, projector screen or whatever. We have nothing. Uh, depending on the amount we've been borrowing, you know, the North Station, they have a small thing, or, or if one of these buildings is available. But it'd be nice to have when we're doing our training in in our site, especially if it's something hands-on and we're, you know, equipment or what have you, it, everything is at our location. So it would be nice to have, if we're building this building, the, the I guess I'll call it the luxuries there on site. So you're you're saying the break room could double as your conference room? Well, I, I yeah, guess. they typically are. Yeah, okay. we're, yeah. Those are usually designed for multiple uses. Okay. For and sure. what's the muster room? That's the same thing. Yeah. Because you've got a break room and a muster room. Uh, Sometimes. Oh. In an example. That's an example one. Yeah, yeah. That that's. There in that case, I'm not sure what building you're looking at. There might be a break room. That is for oh that's a holding DPW yeah okay so that's that's probably for administration uh, staff to have a separate little break room for them that might be what that's what that is what's your criteria for sizing this stuff occupancy so you're looking at the number of employees Correct. the current yeah. fleet of equipment exactly. blah 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 and yep. make sure that it's all going to fit you, exactly. you need you need a locker room for the employees yeah, yeah. most definitely yeah especially uh, I mean, got that as well. Yeah. Uh, again, that's all size based. When we on respond like to storm or whatever, and you know, depending on the weather conditions, you know, people do, you know, change out their uniforms at the shop and whatever. So we definitely need, you know, a locker room. Yeah, we simple. provide. Do you, need a, do you need a shower room for the employees? Uh, I would say, and nowadays, I think you probably have to have it because of chemicals, whatever. Someone needs a shower. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. You you have uh, we have a cold shower there in the garage now. Look at that! Body wash. Body wash. Yeah. Can I just, Jim, if it's okay? Um, so there was when we first met for the first time a year ago. Mm -hmm. Can you just explain the process where you met with every single Absolutely. employee, pretty yeah, much, sure. and that's how you came up with some of your program space based on what your expertise is? Absolutely. That might help, and that you've done some due diligence. With all right. Yeah. I mean, we have this program that was part of this original right. package, and you know that is based on interviews with all the staff. You know, looking at all the existing operations, understanding the staff numbers um, and the equipment, um, and you know, using industry standards of you know space per employee and how it lays out. That's where these numbers come from. So yeah, I mean, there it is based on the needs of their current operations. Um, and we go through a whole equipment list, um, and that's how the, the uh, garage gets sized. Um, you know, there are standards for uh, numbers of equipment maintenance bays that we use as well, um, based on the number of uh, mechanics and the number of vehicles. So, so, it, so the old garage, are you considering that for storage or what at all? Well, well it depends. It depends on the layout and the. And which we'll, site we choose? Which we use? Right. And if we can, if we can, yes. If not, you know, it, it depends I don't on the layout. Cutting corners, but if, if that's going to sit yeah. there, if 
they can't do that. Well, if, we, if, we, there. if we do the north site, obviously we have to establish something in the center of town to yep. go the other way. So that building, you know, like you said, we've taken, you know, that building's in pretty good shape. It's just awful small. So it could be that some pieces of that could come out and be used there. Yep. Same as if you built it on site where it is now. Yeah, just got to think of operationally how that works. I mean, we spent right. a lot of time talking about that, Tommy, at the last meeting. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I'm just explaining. So as Scott was saying, we're trying to figure out, can we find one site that's big enough to cover everything that's needed? Amen. If we can't and we find a smaller site and, and it's in North Hadley, for instance, then it makes sense to keep the south and as a uh, an intermediate point between there and South Hadley to for salt or whatever so yep. have, have you guys dr dropped for, for say like the for full square footing of the building have you dropped that onto any of these sites so it's visible to see we have what they yes that was part of that earlier package right was it in here yeah but Scott when you're talking about that and the site you're at now if the salt shed came down that pool barn, I think you could move. Yeah, I mean, I I think if the building is built correctly, we, we remotely could probably get rid of the pool barn. I mean, if, depending on the layout of the building. Uh, you They, they configured the storage of the pool barn in the new building where it's uh, oh, so you wouldn't more that, weather right? tight. Yeah, because okay. the store the pool barn, I guess, is, is dry storage, but it's not, you know, weather tight or what, what have you. It's, uh, it's not heated. Or yeah, right, right. right. Well, we basically, yeah. a couple few years ago, the building committee, you know, there, we had vehicles sitting outside and right. stuff sitting in there, and it was open to, you know, to the south. So we enclosed the front end of mm -hmm. it. We used some of the garage doors from the old yeah, fire station. Doors. That, yeah, yeah, from the fire station. We took those out because they yeah. had an R value of zero, basically. Mm -hmm. So we put them in down there. So we could put, like, loaders in and keep them out of the snow and the weather. Right. You know, but there's still a lot of, you know, racks in there with stuff. We've got, you know, pipe fittings and stuff for the water department one whole bay. Gotcha. We keep the mini excavator, you know, the tractor, mm -hmm. you know, back truck, the 10-wheeler, the uh, wood chippers in there, you know, Try to keep it out of cover so if you need it, you don't have to unthaw the thing and beat right. the ice off the top or something like that. So that could be removed completely. I, I, I believe that was yeah. in your So that would give you a pretty good space then if you yes, move it was. Yeah. I guess you right. weren't at the first yeah, meeting. I wasn't. Yeah. So that's yeah. when we yeah. had this stuff yeah, out okay. and, yeah, yeah. and looked at yeah. a couple, you know, this is just a yeah. quick <clears throat> study of it, yeah. but um, how we might put that on there. Yeah. And then similar with the other sites. Site six. Are uh, fuel islands necessary at the new site? I wouldn't specifically say a fuel island, but a fuel dock. I think what you would. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, we don't need anything fancy. Uh, we just need a couple five thousand gallon tanks, probably with some kind of lean to enough to keep the weather off it. Uh, we definitely don't need a, any kind of fancy fueling site. No, on. I mean, the, the typical new fueling systems we do now are an above ground, right. two tanks, they're concrete encased, um, and uh, typically the dispenser is actually hung off of the tanks themselves, a pretty efficient system. You want to that, that takes more land space as opposed to being in the ground, right? Well, being above ground, the permitting process oh, I, is I understand. I'm not, a lot. I, yeah. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with what's yeah. going yeah. to be done. I know it doesn't that take a lot more space, honestly, because yeah. you're going to need that island area to drive up to it. Anyway. We have two 10,000 gallon tanks now. And that's more than you need. And mean. that's way more than, I mean, you. Yeah. we can get, I mean, knock on wood, I can get a fuel drop tomorrow if I call today. Okay. Uh, so having, I mean, you, obviously we pay attention to it. We start getting low on fuel, we, we get a drop. But five, well, I'm not sure the dimensions of the tank, what the standard is, but five, 6,000 gallon range would be, be probably plenty. Yeah. When they, when they deliver, do they deliver in one tank or fuel and gas, diesel and gas? Or they diesel? can, they okay. can, depending on what their arrangements are, because the weight of the truck, et cetera, you yeah. know, what, if I need 8,000 gallons in the gas station or another little town, it, it depends, but yeah, for the most part, it comes, <coughs> Uh, we go through a lot more gas than diesel fuel. Yeah. Uh, do you get dedicated deliveries, or do they drop multiple? Do they multiple multiple drops? Like, do they drop to you and to someplace else? They can. They okay. can, depending on 
you know how much room's on the truck. Okay. We try to order about five thousand gallons at a time. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times they'll have another yeah. bunker or something. Yeah. They'll go somewhere else. Okay. Available. So okay, so the five thousand five thousand gallon tank won't be a disadvantage as far as getting truck load at a time. No. Okay. No. And I think my I I talked to the fire chief about this. When you start, the more you have fuel storage, the more uh, issues, I guess, you have as far as permitting, what's needed for suppression, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so the, think, the more think going up to about 10,000 keeps in that. Yeah, so, so the more level. you have, the more it takes, I guess, to have it, too. Correct. Um, you know, his his end of fire protection or whatever. Yeah, and, and yeah fire suppression right. is not typically required if it's not a commercial station. Uh, yeah. So, um, so whatever. I'm not sure what the co rules are, but I know that he told me that in the situation, what within our means is better than being big because yes. of things that go along. With it. That's true. Okay. And you'll have room for your battery charger in the future. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you, UMass has an electric loader. They're the first ones in the area. Is that right? yeah. They ordered it. It's not in yet, I guess. <coughs> well, I saw it being delivered over there. They were trying to yeah. the patrol. Yeah, they ordered it. It's coming. Yeah. Are you guys able to tap into the sewer plant? I mean, do you have wastewater that goes into the sewer plant? Does that work that way? Or not, not direct. Not direct. No. Uh, well, the bathroom goes in direct. Yeah. The drain in the floor does not. Okay. Where the building is. So I guess my question is, you have the ability to tie in to the quote-unquote sewer system yes. down on at where you are now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, well, I, it, depending on the layout of the building, I mean, obviously the sewer is there, whether you need a pump chamber or not would be the question. If, if could the gravity line ends uh, at the third driveway right where that manhole is and then it goes downstream and then gets pumped back right yeah because actually the sewer from the garage actually the way that the system works goes gravity to the bay road pump station the corner and then gets pumped back so i we'd have to obviously there's a manhole there for sewer whether you can get gravity or not would be the question depending on the elevation of the okay. site okay. but the sewer is there and uh, you, readily and you, available and you've got three phase power there yes, yes. The, the, so the only thing uh, utility wise that's an issue is the water pressure right right and well i guess we'd have to verify the influent line to the wastewater treatment plant and the effluent line coming out that goes right. to the river uh, because you know, one supposedly goes down the, the incoming line goes down the dirt driveway and the outgoing line comes through. Because between the building and the yeah, fuel tanks. And the between building the, the building and the fuel tanks, wherever that is. But, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's all corrugated line. It should probably be looked at being replaced anyway. So doing a project like that, you would just repipe that. Okay. Accordingly, that, that was a concern out. we brought up earlier. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Um, I guess we need to point out that you know we did this layout, which we looked at. I think the first meeting on that existing site. It is tight, and I don't think we actually were able to fit both the salt shed and the fuel on here, at least without that additional little property below that. Um, so it is it is a tight site, uh, but you know I think with some additional looking at it. We want to take some some uh, yeah. more careful looks. See, one thing nobody's talked about is efficiency. Mm -hmm. Because of that location, it's really efficient. Whereas North Hadley, all that equipment is going to have to drive. You're talking 20 minutes each way minimum. Uh -huh. So now that's 40 minutes a day. If they come back for lunch, that's more time. And these man hours add up. Yeah. And that's a constant. Yeah, every day, every day, every day. Yeah, you know, and, and it's also, I mean, I we talked about that early on that maybe we could use a split site. But the more you talk, the more you discuss that, um, and I hate to say this, but if you have conscientious employees, two locations for the most part isn't the problem. But if you get some employees that like to uh, 
not are not the most conscientious, that just breeds uh, not doing the job properly all the time. And you know, right now you get good employees, okay, but if, and it, 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 that that just makes supervising that kind of stuff extremely difficult. Do you guys come back for lunch, Scott, or do you have lunch out in the field? They have it on the field. They do. That makes sense. But but you, you're 100 percent white, uh, correct, Wally. As far as equipment goes, you're bouncing the backhoe from North Hadley down here to do a job or or uh, the loader or whatever. Uh, or the lawnmowers, you got to load them up. Yeah, and right. Drive right. Them. And like like I said, right now most of the time, as crazy as it is, the lawnmowers get driven. Right no, that makes sense. It's fast. We don't need the trailer. Right. Yeah, you know, sense. But if you had a split site, you could keep the mowers down there and drive them from that site. You know, you're going to have a loader there most of the time, anyways. Both but then, sides. where do you service them? That's the best. Right. Well, right. Yeah. So yeah. when it needs to be serviced, they'd have to. I mean, I'm thinking like the building maintenance could be down at the old garage. We could have a shop to work in to keep the central services stuff. You know, there's some stuff there that could be separated out. You know. Yeah. And not have to be. You know, it, 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 it would be, I mean, if, let's just say this, whichever site was available. Okay, maybe everything wouldn't fit on it, but if you had to split the site, it's a whole lot easier. That's only two miles down the road versus eight miles down the road. No, North Hadley, I measured it the other day. It's not it's that not, far. It's about, I don't know, five miles, four and a half, five miles. But that takes time on a on a payloader. Oh yeah, it's a list lot of it. Any, any track yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it go, probably goes a whopping 13, 14 miles exactly. an hour. Exactly. So, I mean, but well, it would be awesome if we could make it work on the existing site. But yeah. it's tight. I mean, in yeah. the North Hadley one is tight. Okay, also, so yeah, what does what does use. tight mean? To you guys, I, I understand what the word means, but what is the definition to you guys? Are you not going to be able to turn vehicles around? Uh, it's a matter of fitting all the program on the site, not just the building, but also the site amenities. Like I said, this, these both the salt shed and the uh, fuel. Um, so you know, we need to look at some Gary uh, sort of innovative ways to fit everything on there. Uh -huh. um, what if we, if the site due south of the existing garage was purchased? I think that's like one to one and a quarter acres. Right. Yep. But would that, that make a big difference? I mean, it would definitely give you more room. Would that it would make help a, a bit? Sure. Would that make a Would that make it? Would that make a big enough difference to fit? Um, I guess we'd have to look at it. I, okay. I think it would. I think it would. Um, you know there is some limitation because of the river setbacks on that even on that lot, um, but uh, I think we have to look at it. Um, so when you say setbacks, that means the building couldn't be where the setback is, but you could still park equipment. I believe like that's the school correct. buses and stuff could still be. Correct. It, on depends that on, it depends on what kind of setbacks he's talking yeah, about. Yeah. Wally. The riverfront, right? The, yeah. the riverfront, the two hundred foot. They don't want any kind of development in there. I mean, within 200 feet, they have total jurisdiction, but they'll sometimes will allow you to do stuff within a, the second hundred feet. Correct. So you just have to, we have to discuss it with. It looks like the buses are parked there now. No. Yeah. They're not? They're 200 feet away? And oh. there won't, that's not long term at all. Oh. Those buses. Yeah, the buses, we're not planning on it being in there. Yeah, and, and, oh, that and, gives more room for the site. Yeah, and, and all, and, you know, some, sometimes you can use it, whether or not they allow you to pave it or put right, yeah, gravel down is another story. A lot of it depends on the elevation. There's a, there's, it's, not, it's, a, it's not a cut and dry yes okay. or no. Right. It, exactly. it, it depends on... <clears throat> it may just simply be some additional permitting, but it, yeah. it could... Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's something we'd have to look at in more detail. Obviously the one expense that you'd have to incur is temporary conditions like you need a temporary you need to live somewhere temporarily right? yeah, that, yeah. yeah so so if you're going to use the existing site mm -hmm. you'd be demoing the current facility to Correct. make it work yeah exactly right. current facility the whole the whole garage or just the salt shed 
Uh, at That's least the way we looked at it so far, the whole garage. Yeah, to the replace, whole garage would be to replace, replace that. that. Yeah, correct. So, now, is there a scheme that could somehow keep that and build um, you know, build an additional building? Problem is, you know, the the plant at the back is right smack in the middle of the site. Yeah, so you can't the, go. It makes off it the difficult. Back. Yeah, it makes it really difficult to build a substantial portion of that program. Other than right here and, and you know potentially down here as well. How big is, is your proposed building? Thirty something thousand square feet. <coughs> Thirty-two. Thirty-two thousand. And the site. Thirty-two. Yeah, thirty-two and a half. How many acres do we have on the end of Middle Street between parcel eleven A and eleven? Oh, I have that somewhere. <coughs> to find it. You guys track out the sewer in there. Yeah, I, yeah, I understand. So one and two. So. Four, six, and one eight, so six, six and a half acres almost. And I realize that the sewer plant is in the way. I can't really see see it well enough to think that there's got all that sit right there. And it seems to me that if you were to tear down the pole barn and and start there and build south. And you know, the salt shed's there, but that can get moved somewhere. But it seems like there's plenty of, plenty of room. And the, the sewer plant, are we going to need to expand that at some point? Well, if, if our intentions come through with Amherst, no. Okay, but let's say they don't and we had to expand that. It, it, Where it, would it go? It would be depending on the growth of the town. Uh, I don't think there's very much building left like uh, going north, right, with lots and stuff that are on Sewer River Drive. Uh, well, not too much. It'd be more. It'd be more like Route Nine if something really big happened right. in there. But where, which was left on Route Nine? Right. If even if we meet and join with Amherst, will the sewer plant have to be upgraded to the next level? I don't think so. That no. It's not going to have the capacity. We we would lose half our capacity if we go to Amherst. Okay, but in the future. Would it have to be like upgraded just because of age or new rules or yeah. for the extra? Right now, I, I think process-wise, what's there, they're not going to, it'd be, it'd be so small, there, there's nothing you can really do. I mean, you need to, you need water there to process. So We're, we're, we're a settling plant right now. We're, we're called a considered a settling plant? Uh, yeah, kind of, because we don't have our own press. So we, we treat the water. We have a... Uh, solids go into a holding area and it gets transported off so okay kind of sort of the, the question i i mean i've often wondered how we've gotten away with just being a settling plant this long but what will we if we go to amherst is, we don't think we're going to have to upgrade to a real level i, of I don't i don't think so because then then our our amount of sludge would even be that much less. It would be, you know, going to Amherst. So that that's our biggest thing right now, and the biggest expense of that wastewater treatment plant is hauling the sludge. We don't make our own. In, in the world, in the field, you call it cake. When they right. press the, we don't do that. We don't process the. Uh, we make clean water coming out the out, out going the outfall, but we don't process our own solids. So we, we're, uh, we're gonna say what a level two plant. Uh, it's a it's a grade four plant. A grade four plant, yeah. but we don't process the solids. We okay. we ship it, and that's the most expensive part of our operation. Okay. Only only we increase because I had I had where, where I worked in the past I had grade two and three wastewater licenses. One was industrial, but I had both industrial and municipal yeah. for whatever reason because of where I worked. Yeah. But uh, I don't have any more. Too bad we could use you. <laughs> <laughs> when they, it was kind of kind of a funny story. When I got my, I had 
with the municipal forest and the second one they had, I think they had an industrial one because of the different companies I had worked for. And so we were taking them in Worcester and uh, we had a chemical engineer as our instructor and I was talking to the guy and I says, you know, in a break I said, what's the passing grade for passing these things? He says, a 60. I looked at him kind of funny. He says, yeah, he, we don't have very high standards. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying yeah. to put a list together of kind of what what steps we ought to take to look more carefully at the existing BBW site, I guess. So one might be we should go back and, you know, try another couple of site layouts in a little more detail to see I, really I mean, how, I mean, obviously how what, the, what can we make work there. I, I that, that effluent line, the effluent, I think, is going to, it is what it is. It's, it's far enough over, but that effluent line definitely is something going to be a concern about using that site, how to reroute that. Uh -huh. So I don't, obviously you wouldn't want an F4 line under your new building. No, we can't build on top of that. <laughs> right. no. exactly. That wouldn't be good. Yep. Stay, they, they stay um, like this. I think you had given us a plan a long time ago, and I think this yeah. was translated. <coughs> into, so those are the two lines, I think. Is that approximately what they were? I, mean, I remember it being kind of a triangle. Yeah, like you're, you're right. That one comes over here. I think, it, I think this line might be a little bit okay. here or something, but okay. that other one... Uh, I think there's a gate here and that uh, okay. hand hole it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is is the the new building that you were playing with, I realize it's not set in stone, but is it relatively rectangular? Yes. Yeah. Typically they are. I mean most of the time, you know, the most cost efficient and, and cost effective and, and schedule effective are a pre engineered building. They like to be very square. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what you were now if if we the existing site, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about this in and uh, just today's way of doing things. You you want and in inside you know you come in one way and you exit and other you know you always we try to do that. Yeah, it's better. Right. For sure. Is that something that's still going to be feasible on that site, or that's to be determined? I think that's. A, I think that's to be determined. Um, I guess the question is, you know, it, it, what had, is there any survey information? You, you showed us that one plan. I don't know one if there's any recent survey. I don't think so. What what uh, Dennis and had out in the back is. Yeah. It. We've been yeah. doing a lot of house cleaning with files down okay. there and plans, and we haven't stumbled across anything. Do you, do you recall if we like saw anything? She's been yeah. scanning away, so yeah, yeah. Okay. just see that. I mean, that know. you know, yeah. so in my list here, that might be another item that maybe the town wants to get a survey done. You could, you know, get the exact locations of the lines. You might be able to find a decent survey or someplace. I've done some work in the area, and I don't know if I've got a, maybe an outline of the, the town's property. I'll have to check my okay. files and see, but we all know I'm not very good at knowing what I have. <laughs> um, because, yeah, that would be huge. I mean, just, just looking at this, I'm, I mean, I'm thinking, do you roughly the dimensions of the building? Uh, we do, don't we? Roughly. Yes. The other thing I was going to mention is obviously the water pressure you've mentioned is an issue. Um, I guess the question is number one, is there a way to get that tested to see what that actually is? Yeah, we, uh, I actually uh, talked to my guys, and we have the equipment to do that ourselves. Oh, if, really? if for a preliminary number, if you would accept ours, I guess at least to move forward. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not you know an engineer. Understood. Engineer, but at least it'll be some. I can to get start something. Okay. Yeah, yeah that'd be great because that'll at least know whether what ballpark we're in. Are we going to definitely need a fire pump? And what is that? What consequences are there there? And then you know other 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 solutions for upgrading that line is that worth considering? I know we kind of threw that out. I think yeah, at one point, but I mean, I, I talked to Carolyn but briefly about this after our last meeting. That you know, obviously doing a project like this, and you know, if we had to 
bend, you know, bring a water line down there from Bay Road, mm -hmm. it does benefit just not us, it, it, our yeah. system and sure. every resident yeah, on that well, street. I, I meant to talk to two of the residences on there and find out if what they, how is the water pressure for their for their houses, you know. It, it, don't, you'll never notice it inside of like, you know, like it's the, the fills or whatever. Yeah. They're, they're used to that. They're never going to notice it. You turn your sprinkler on and do your thing. It's it's more like, you know, volume of water, like and that end hydrant. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mixed bag of pipe. It, it's I believe comes in the street as four inches and goes. There's a little bit of six, mm -hmm. and then goes back to a little bit of four again. <laughs> so it's not. I mean, I thought it was bigger lines coming from Bay Road and it came down like one hydrant or something. No, it comes it's in off the small? street with four inch. Yeah, okay. one of the oldest fire hydrants in town is right on that, oh, uh, next to the Rex house there, on the corner. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's a, small. Yeah, but the, the pipe is that uh, is there though on Bay Road, mm -hmm. and like I said, if we had to do a project, obviously, we'd have to figure out how to fund it. But uh, what's the pipe on Bay Road? Ten inch, eight inch? Eight inch, but there's plenty of water there. Well, you fund it by the money you save on not having to buy the land. Right. Yeah, I, but like I said, I mean, eventually, you know, it, it, it is in our capital plan. I mean, we have to do something there eventually regardless. So, uh -huh. uh, No luck with the building size? Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the vehicle garage, we typically try to get 100 feet wide mm -hmm. to get a center drive aisle. It's only about 150 feet long. And it's about 150 feet long, so it's 100 by 150. In a, in a scheme I had for the existing site, they were separate because it's not possible to have them next to each other with the plant. So then the other building is also 100 feet wide by about 190 at its longest. But it accommodates two drive-through bays for the wash bay and maintenance, so there's a little cutout. So it's a little bit of an L shape. Okay, so let's say it's, you're talking 200 by 200. Ish in that to range. cover everything yeah. mm -hmm. in that range, right? That ought to fit in here. And then I realize you have to deal with being able to get vehicles in and out and all that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we should take another couple looks at how that site can lay out. And one, maybe one of those is how do we look at that existing building? Is there a way to keep it or not? I mean, it's, it's going to be tough enough to work out of that site while we're redoing it. I mean, you could, the salt shed, you could set something temporary that's not that bad. Right. But if you're tearing a building down and you're going to go try to work somewhere out of it's everything not easy. else is going to be yeah. very expensive and right. very, I mean, yeah, it's I'm not like, driving like the, all over. The salt shed, I mean, if you if you pick the location that's out of the way, yeah, I guess you build that first. You do that first and or the, the fuel, right? Right, fuel dock or exactly. obviously the tank's right. got to be pulled and right. All that. There's, there's a lot of pulmonary work that needs to be done. Do you have room to move those dirt piles somewhere else? How much you want? I get. Yeah, I mean that's that's I all things that have to be it's looked at. Because yeah. that takes up a lot of room oh, yeah. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, one of them we we would love to get rid of. We just don't know where. I mean, it's it's like co-mingled, you know, like shoulder, we scrape the edge of the road. It's not long, it's good fill. It, it's it good is. fill, good common fill. But, you know, uh, we're, we're how not, big is that pile? Yeah, it's good size. Okay. Some but, of it was, we used to have the park homes, you know, chips, dump our chips there, yeah. that's, you know, but oh, it's so, mixed in with other yeah. stuff too. So it's not great fill then either? Oh, the chips that. have been there for, oh, okay. that's probably 30 years ago. We, I mean, we, we use it for filling a hole here and there. And, mm. It, we dig into it, and it's, everything's pretty much broke down, so. One name comes to mind, Ed Gerlinski. Yeah. They were all there. In the stump dump? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not stumps. You can't put stumps in there. Well, one of the things that the building committee studied years ago was how to, you know, how a building of such magnitude would fit on that space. And the only other thing they came up with is to put some of those break rooms and office spaces up above on the second floor. On the second floor, yeah. and it just adds 
you know, it does add an amount of maintenance costs and inspection fees and all kinds of stuff, not to mention the initial costs. Um, and, it, you know, the fact that, you, you know, if you put that stuff on a second floor, the, the ceiling in there is already 20 feet. So how high can you actually go? Are you able to stack those departments in, a, in an area where you have your, you know, your break rooms and your office stuff, of, you know, or maybe Above the muster room. Right. Yeah, make the yeah. muster room in the first floor and the break room and Could the be. bathrooms in the second floor or something. Right. Right. But it does add the elevator cost and, and maintenance fees. Stairs. Oh, but elevators it, are going crazy. It's, it's just, been going crazy. We just had a, we got to change out a fire switch in the elevator at this thing. It's over 5,500 bucks. The the elevators are insane. The, the hourly wage is per guy. Well, when I built the addition to my house, I looked looking to put. I made. I wanted to make it hand. Wanted to make the addition handicap accessible. I wanted to live there till um, Crokin. So I said, well, I looked online. Gee, I can get a three four three floor elevator for fifteen grand. I said, that's not a bad price at all. And it was like three companies that gave me that ballpark price. So I called up two of them. Oh, that's the price of the elevator, but we've got to get an installation. Oh, well, really? okay. And you can't install it yourself in the state of Massachusetts. No. Come to find out, it was like 60. The cheapest one I got, the, the price of the range, this goes back three years, 40, 45000 to 55000 I said, <laughs> no, that, that's mm -hmm. not going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just to install it, Jim? What? To just install it? Yes. No, that was the total price. That was the total, total price. Total price. The elevator and install. Three and times the first price. You gotta, but I've got to build it. I've got to, it's up to me to build the elevator shaft for it. Mm -hmm. So you're talking probably a lot. So then I looked at a, getting a stair lift. And in Massachusetts, the company that sells it wouldn't allow me to sell it, to put it in myself. The company in Pennsylvania says, oh, yeah, we even give you a video how to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought two stair lifts, went to my second floor, went to my cellar for four grand, mm -hmm. and put them in myself. They worked like a charm. <laughs> <clears throat> but either um, either way, whether it's second floor, I think or, it's yeah. worth at least considering yeah. it. Yeah, or basement, it. it's right. you know, there's other levels that you can use, and vertical transportation is Correct. is like the, you know, are we going to get over this hurdle yeah. or not? And that, that's pretty much the thing that can save you a bunch of square footage on your footprint. Nope, well, and and, and that, to, to, to your point on that one, um, if push comes to shove, that cost of the elevator might be worthwhile to keep this all consolidated into one site. Right, you right. have to right. look at it that right. way. You know, because you're talking break room and offices kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient to go upstairs. However, um, the price of buying someplace else or buying this or doing that, if we can overcome the water pressure thing, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe that, that, that cost of the elevator might be appropriate. Yeah, and if you're so going to have a, a part of this building with a 16-foot high door, you're going to have 20-foot, you know, you got two stories high already, so it wouldn't be that big a deal to, to make a second floor. No, structurally it's not too bad, but yeah, I mean, adding the stairs and elevators adds some percentage of the total yeah. cost. Yeah. You know, to Jimmy's not, point, it's a whole lot less than buying a piece of land. It could be. And there's and always I'll, maintenance costs. I mean, elevators are way more expensive to maintain than something without an elevator. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hear you. Yeah. But, you know, there's always, if it's real estate, you're going to, there's going to be maintenance costs, so. Yeah. You know, the, the rate right now is 360 bucks an hour per guy. For elevator repairs? Oh, God. I think I'm going back to school. <laughs> Getting into unions tough. Um, one other question is, I don't know, is there any, has, has there ever been any kind of geotech investigation on these? Do you have any information on what the soils are Not anywhere there. around there? Okay. Whether there's any concerns about, I mean. It, oh, I'm sure that. That's been a DPW yard yeah, for so how many I'm sure years? No, I'm talking about structural. Oh, um, um, structurally. It's yeah. it, no it's contamination. Not, there may be. There was no fill there, right? It was all nice. It's all been yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's what I'm asking about. Na yeah. Naturally but flat. Hopefully, yeah. no, we can assume no that can be standard spread yeah. footings. Yeah. Not, we don't have to do any soil improvements right. or something. Like yeah, that, for so. for a one story building garage, you're probably golden. You talk a two story, 
Uh, even so, I mean, the, you, you got the a little different kind of a loading. Right. Yeah. If that's what is decided upon. But even a two story, you're not talking a heavy yeah, load on that. Yeah, that doesn't make a big difference. If you're difference. talking an office loading as opposed to a, uh, an industrial loading. Yeah, or, but the garage is an industrial loading for sure. Wait, right, but it's going to be one story. Yeah, yes, correct. Even so, it, it, you know, what, once you get much further along in the design, it's going to be required to do that. But at least if you had any information at all. Um, <coughs> yeah, there, there, there's going to be nothing on that. The plans we pulled up, what were we trying to figure out for the. Oh, with the trailers. We had a map from before the building was even built. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's like, like, oh, it's right here. No, we're not there. <laughs> was a, we were looking at the tobacco barn that was where the yeah, highway okay, was. Here, right. yeah. I, I would guess that site has been a DPW yard since the 60s. Yeah. The, it was that, sewer. That, and then they built the DPW because right. we were over right. the railroad. But, the, sewer but, but the, uh, that garage was built in the 71. Okay, I go say late okay. 60s. Okay, 71. I guess from walking around, I don't remember, but are there any major like settlement cracks or anything that you've noticed in the that building? Sort of indicate. You know, no, the no. only cracks are for people wailing. So at least, at yeah. least you know there, we can make some assumptions. It, at and least and at like point. at the sewer plant, there's no settling or any yeah. problems in that building either. Okay. That salt shed, there's nothing there. Yeah. No. I was going to say, for the amount of years that that's been there, it all will be driving on everything. That land is probably decently compa compacted, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just trying to, you know, find out, list things that could potentially affect the cost, obviously. So that's, um, I, I'd be more concerned about when they do some soil borings, yeah. what leak contamination years and all that good stuff, because right. you, you know for a fact that uh, you're going to find something. Somewhere. Were there any reported leaks that you're aware of? It's never over five gallons. Okay. Uh, there was, <laughs> there was at a time. Anyway. There was one, <laughs> one when I got there, but I, mean, I don't know why Chris reported that. Remember, he uh, the loader out back. There was oh, a report. Oh yeah, well they cleaned spill. that up. Yeah. yeah, we had the PCBs when the telephone pole went down, but that was on black. Um, they cleaned that up. Just as far as I've been there, one one spill that was reported, okay, but it wasn't. So maybe it wasn't. Not that bad, no, it wasn't like a big tanker spill or anything. It was a piece of equipment, and it probably was under the threshold. But for whatever reason, he reported it. And again, I'm sorry, I'm not remembering right now. But how old are those fuel tanks? I'm going to say around late '80s, probably. Yeah, we had some uh, uh, work done to. Uh, the prothotic protection on it and like just kicking around the idea the vendors are saying that those tanks are kind of met their expected life so whatever yeah. that is we have a 30 year similar so. situation we're working with Fox Road EPW and they were at a point where their insurance company wasn't going to insure them anymore I think they yeah. somehow got around it temporarily <laughs> Well, yeah, there, so there is the protection and it is tested and they okay, have the, yeah. we have the computer so you're still able checking. to certify them that's yeah the right, right. They, we are starting to have problems with you know pulling up the pipe and going to the tanks because the pumps right. are having issues at right. certain right. times okay. those still single wall tanks okay. I, I, think, I think those are doubles I think that's double with really? periodic protect I think so but Could I'm not yeah, I mean yeah. John would know in 84 when I left the first time we were still had the one gas tank over by the building so so hopefully they, there's no indication of leaking there either. Right. Uh, there, there hasn't been any, yeah. any from our last testing so yeah. okay that's good uh, yeah. yeah in the mechanical area and the existing building are the pits to work like a you know jiffy lube pits no no, no. no. are they proposed in the new building no okay we have to we do this left now yes. everything, everything is yeah. is left yeah, yeah. yeah. there's Issues with pits right there. That's what I asked. You, <laughs> you said, yeah, oh that thing, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you put a pit in, what you need to do is insane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I would, I would advise against it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, a truck lift was proposed. So. Yeah. yeah. Which means that side's going to have to be really high. Yeah. Okay. But it would be anyway, for sure. Okay. So that's the side. I don't know if you paid attention. Like the the circumference, there's a mezzanine for right. like storage. Storage. So. Right. so therefore, you're going to look at trying to fit 
this facility on that site. Yeah, let us take a look. A look and a and, and even possibly considering two story for the break area and, and stuff for yes. the offices if if needed. Correct. Okay. I'm going to try to contact the lady that owns parcel 10 on the map and see if she's interested in selling. Okay. Got coal. She's uh, she's up there in age. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and I don't know if, if if you can do a pressure test at least. Yeah, I can you get know, you a pressure. I can get you some numbers. Yeah. Okay, we can take a look at that. I mean, if you want like real ones and you want to us to get an engineer to do it, I mean, or somebody that does fire full like for professional, I mean, we can certainly do that. But I can get you a preliminary. If you can get preliminary ones, let's take a look at it. We'll see if, if you know. The engineer will take a look and yeah. see what he thinks. Um, and I guess we we must have a we have a picture or something of that drawing showing those waste lines. I don't know if there's any more accurate information that we might be able to get. I, I think I think Dennis that, that, that drawing is, that we had. Yeah, the yeah, drawing we, we have the and trailers. institutional knowledge of Dennis and John is going to be our best. Uh, yeah. Thing with that, so I, I mean, I can certainly make them available okay. when you come around. So that's not going to be, you know, because I, I, I get, I guess we can figure it out pretty easy. Find the outfall. We know where it is in the building. It, you would be assuming it's straight. I think so. <laughs> well, we did have, here. we do, we have a picture of of that plan that we found that yeah. day. So I mean, like I said, we can definitely do a little more legwork with. Okay. Uh, you know, that the that plan we have for the, like you said, for the trailers, right. you know, shows both of them, but it, yeah. it was a tobacco barn there, so it doesn't show the perspective of exactly where right. the building is, but you can kind of figure it out. And what would the water cost to run eight inch from? Well, we need eight fall inch part. From six. Uh, eight inch. You, you would run eight, eight inch, inch yeah, because of fire flow water. Okay. Yeah. So, just just picture this in your mind from South Maple Street from the bike path behind the mall to the intersection of South Maple or uh, Mill Valley. Yep. That that was ten inch pipe. So it was a half a million dollars. Okay. Okay. But you didn't do that. We didn't do it. But you could do it like a regular line. Ew. That's a, that's, that might be a bit of an undertaking for the yeah, new schedule. If we had if we had the manpower, yeah, but I mean it, uh, from May till whatever december we never have a full staff with guys yeah. taking time off doing things uh you know I've, a dpw is a is a maintenance company so we're we're maintaining our system roads water etc and i mean it can be done but it'd be an undertaking yeah. Also, we'd be putting in a piece of line somewhere, we'd have a problem somewhere else, we'd be back filling a hole and you'd be leaving to go and, and it, fix a leak of course or there's a lot of The one on South Maple Street was pretty much a straight line with only a couple of connections. This one on Middle South Street. Middle Street oh, yeah. has a house. lot of connections. Yeah, you got to tie in all the houses and I mean it's an undertaking to do. Yeah, it, it would also be more because we did that in conjunction with Baltazar. Right. Is there any infrastructure money that can help pay for a new line? In Hadley? <laughs> <laughs> and where's that on the list, though, for needing to be done anyway? Oh, it's uh, it's up there because it's already. Sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I mean. It's earmark time, though, for legislators, so let's talk yeah. more. It's, uh, I mean, fireful wise, they're, it, right. it's null. Just just like that section on South Maple Street. It's when you, when you open that hydrant, it's like, would you just crack it open? I mean, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, realistically, I guess you're probably talking, I bet you close to a million dollars to put the pipe down there. Hi, cause, you know, hydrant every 500, you got to meet all the standards. Right. That's sure. another thing, too. You right. you do something, it's got to meet all this, just like building. Right. The same thing, you touch it, it's got to meet all the standards. Yeah, I have to meet the new energy code July 1st for this. I, I, think, I think there will be... Good. Yeah, there's, a, there's structural upgrades too that are coming. I mean, as far as like going down there, I, we own up to basically everyone's front door there, so obviously there's plenty of room to put most of the pipe off the roads. We're not impacting, you know, roadway patch and pavement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's definitely 
you take that into consideration, it, it lowers your cost. Yep. But would that be, be an eight inch or six inch? Eight. Eight, eight inch. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll look and see if I've got anything in my files regarding this area. Okay. Yeah, that's that'll great. be helpful. That's so great. Just just to review for the next meeting, next meeting that we have, what we want to try to have. Yes. Done is you're going to try to put the buildings on the site yep. for various scenarios. Scott's going to do a pressure test of the flow of the water and get the information to us. Right. Randy and Scott are going to look and see if there's any kind of site surveys in your various files of the this Middle Street site. I'm going to try to see if I can get a hold of this the lady that owns the property. She's interested in selling, and then we'll go from there. Any any other ideas that we could be investigating? I mean, we could fit once we find out if it fits on the site that's going to be big as far as okay yeah, right. without is, without impact as it's being done to right and this is okay I mean there's no doubt if we decide we decide to build on this site there's going to be a monster inconvenience during construction sure. that's facts so we got to get out of our mind that well we're going to be an impacted yeah you're going to be no matter what we do you're going to be impacted there but the long-term result will be a huge improvement. The, the biggest thing is if you can leave the building, the other stuff you could work around, and it's not going to be a crazy amount of money. Or, yeah. You know. When you say leave the building, you don't mean the trailers, right? <laughs> well, those will have to stay. You're not gonna, you can't build out there anyway. So they're too close to the road. So. Yeah, well, wow. no. Are you laying the no. trailer? We're, we're no, going to no, keep, keep the trailer and build a new <laughs> building up to this. We're adding on to the trailer. We're going to stack you're, them. You're, you're basing <laughs> a lot of your results on keeping setbacks properly, correct? Yes. Think out of the box. Yeah. Mr. Planning Board here, if anybody's saying this, how would this work if we were able to build the buildings closer to the road? We would have to go through zoning. Well, I can we get that? We, yeah. we know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Nobody knows better than this guy right here, sure. probably, and this guy. Yeah. But let's say we could go push it mm -hmm. ten feet off of the road. Yeah. Okay. How much? And, and even look at do that scenario though. Sure. This is this is setback. If we could go ten feet off of the road, sure. because of where this building is located, you've got z next to zero impact to anybody in town. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So getting the zoning variance, and there would be a zoning variance, but I'm sure. But no, but it, no neighbor to complain about it. The other, you, you, yeah. Who, who are you going to have to complain? Two yeah. people, because okay. everybody. New building. Everybody, everybody, right, right. everybody right. north trailers. of this is is they're 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 never going to see the right. issue. The trailers are about ten feet right now. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Right. So the way I see it is it's start property, start at the back. Not even that. Are they give right? yourself yeah. enough space to be reasonable in the back, and then come yeah. forward and see where that leaves you. And if we, I agree with Jimmy. If we have to go to the zoning board for this I, I think I would a, I would think that we would have a decent chance of going to the, to the zoning board for the variance for the simple reason that the impact yeah we don't have all the scenarios that said that I mean and even any attorney will tell you the majority of variances that are granted in the state of Massachusetts shouldn't be <laughs> the only reason they're granted is because nobody complains yeah, right. there's not a hardship like right these, yeah, you know the there's very few hardships yeah. But nobody's complaining. Yeah, it's not a big deal. We don't mind. We don't care. It's fine. Big deal, you know. Okay. So, yeah, we'll push okay. the envelope. Sounds good. And I guess you know we can maybe have some sort of side ideas about how to use that adjacent property if that becomes an option. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, should like, should somebody reach out to Ronnie though, just as an alternate, see if he's interested in selling or what, whatever for that corner? Or? I'm, well, I'm going to see Ron. Uh, I'll see him Sunday okay. or Saturday and find out. You know, so that's yeah, basically across the street. Just right? have an no, that, that's the one up on uh, Rocky, Rocky Hill Road. Hill Road. 
Rocky Hill and Norman Drive. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong site. Yeah, yeah. that's Jim. Just yeah. remember in those oh, okay. in those yes. discussions yes. that it's not a simple transaction like that. So we have to follow public public. Oh, procurement. I know. I'm, I'm not looking. To, I'm not yeah. looking to offer. I'm just looking to see if Perfect. he's interested in selling. Oh, okay. I, I'm, there's no way this guy's going to get involved in anything like that. <laughs> Plus, I mean, it'd be hard to hide anything in that location. Well, right. Wow. Yeah. 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 But you couldn't be more wide open. And right. you've got two roads to be 50 foot set back mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Yep. And, yep. And, and you've got a tremendous traffic back up on, route, on Rocky Hill Road there all the time. Right. So that, that's going to limit what you can do there. And you're not that far from the river either. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right. You're going to yeah, that 200 feet from the river is going to have a huge impact on that piece. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, yeah, just, just, to, to, just to ask. Just to ask. Doesn't hurt to talk. No. No, I agree. Doing due diligence. Yeah. We'll right. put the break room there, and we'll put the locker room at the old site. They <laughs> <laughs> can run in between. <laughs> that way, there'll be free exercise. There you go. Buying bicycles. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like in great e shape. E bikes. <laughs> okay. Um, next meeting. Two one two. Two one to two fifteen. And. We could set up the meetings in March. What's the meeting in March? 3 1 and 3 15. Those sound good over here. We did 3 1 already. It's 2 1, 2 15, and 3 1. Uh, yeah. 2 1, 2 15, 3 1, and 3 15. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. Anything else? That's enough for next time. We look at me. We got something else. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye.